Did you know that the word Trinity isn't found in the King James Bible? That's correct. Oh, but the word Bible's not in there either. And the word rapture's not in there. That is very true. Um, the word rapture comes from a, the old Latin Vulgate, um, speaking about the catching away of the body of Christ because it will be a very joyous event, very rapturous event. Uh, at least for those of us that are saved, for those of you that are lost and looking to go through the time of Jacob's trouble, well, I know that it would be a terrible thing for you to get yanked out before you know, all that fun suffering gets started so that you can prove that you're a real fine Christian. Kind of a weird thing, but uh, see, here's the point. Trinity isn't in there. Well, neither is Bible, neither is rapture. There's other words that we use and whatever. But here's the, the whole thing about this. The word Bible isn't going to lead you into a false system of belief. If you bring the word Bible into your vocabulary as a Christian, it isn't going to turn you into some kind of weird pagan philosopher type of a thing. You say the word rapture, well, that's not going to lead you into any kind of false thing either, except for what a lot of people think, you know, oh, the rapture's false. No, it's not. Actually, you just are a very poor student of scripture. Um, and I have proved it from the scriptures. I don't need John Nelson Darby's notes or C.I. Schofield's notes or whatever. Oh, you've, you've been taught by them and then you've been brainwashed. In. Please, I've preached the things that those guys have never even seen from the scriptures. I get revelations about the catching up of the body of Christ from members out there, viewers of my channel. I've gotten, I got one the one time from a housewife. It's an amazing revelation from the Lord that the Lord showed her. Uh, C.I. Schofield couldn't dream of finding things like that. It's uh, found by Bible-believing Christians. So that's a thing there. But uh, this Trinity thing, um, there's no basis for it in Scripture. And if you use the word Trinity, you're actually promoting a very false uh, pagan idol. You see, you go back through the Old Testament, there were times where they had three different gods. I have a whole study on that. Um, and they even had a fourth one, just like the Roman Catholic Church does. You see, you have Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, in the Roman Catholic Church, but then you have Holy Mother Mary, the mother of God. Oh, okay. Um, then you have a fourth member. And they actually have a earthly trinity, uh, Joseph, Mary, Jesus, and then they have the heavenly trinity. Uh, so you have a triangle up top and a triangle down below. As above, so below. Hmm. Kind of a little bit occultic there. And you put the, the two triangles together, you have the hexagram. Nothing to it, of course. There would be no connection at all. Uh, again, I have studies on this. Proving it. Showing it from their own writings, from their own paintings, their own system. Uh, yes, there are pagan and satanic uh, trinities out there. But the Bible word is Godhead. And the Bible doctrine of the Godhead is that there is one being, one person named God. And this one being consists of three parts. The parts are not the same. Okay, understand that. Body, soul, and spirit, they're not the same. And with God, they can be separate, and they can speak to each other. All right? Uh, and there's a somewhat of that with us, too. Because you get to the book of Revelation, their souls are up in heaven under the altar, talking, saying, How long, O Lord? Holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood which was shed on the earth? talking about their physical, fleshly blood down there. But it's the souls that are speaking in heaven. Hmm. Man is made in the likeness of God, the image of God. Do you see other three other persons here? Where are the other two Brians? See, the Trinitarians are the pagans. The Trinitarians, you go back throughout ancient history, lots of pagan cultures had three gods. Huh. And see, the other thing is, the Bible warns about adding to the scriptures. Add thou not unto his word, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Okay, it says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 30, I think verse 5. All right. Um, and Trinitarians, they have to add six different words to make their system work, and they all do it. They all have to add to the scriptures. Uh, word number one, Trinity, obviously. Word number two, Trinitarian. You have to say Trinitarian. Then they also have three persons. They say God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and divine essence. Yes, that's correct. The Trinitarian God wears female perfume. Uh, I'm not joking. I've proved that in one of my studies too. Um, so 
apparently you got somewhat of a sissy god there or something, or sissy gods. Uh, oh no, it's not three gods, it's only three persons. But they all say that they're god, but they're, you know, they're co-equal gods, or uh, persons. Um, uh, there aren't three different gods, we just have three different uh, god titles. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God the Father. It's a bunch of satanic pagan nonsense. God is not the author of confusion. And again, I have a video on that showing a Roman Catholic bishop saying that the Trinity doctrine is made to confuse you. And you look at the Trinity doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church and the Trinity doctrine of the Baptists and who, anybody else that's a Protestant, it's the same thing. There's no difference. Hmm. It's not in Scripture. You have to add to the Scriptures to make the Trinity system work. See? That's why you have to reject it as a Christian. Understand that when Jesus Christ walked on the earth, he was God manifest in the flesh. There's nobody higher than Jesus Christ. The only reason he said, my father is greater than I is because he's talking about the soul. The soul is superior to the body. Hey, you know what? My soul is better than my body of flesh. That's all that Jesus was saying. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Things in heaven and things on earth. Is God the father going to bow to Jesus? No. <laughs> But if you're a Trinitarian, how do you work that out? I've, I mean, again, I've preached for years on this thing, have all the scriptures, all the things, but a lot of dumb people on YouTube come along and they say, oh, I don't believe this because you can't prove this and you can't prove, why is Jesus seated at the right hand of the Father? I have two studies covering it, going through all the scriptures, Old Testament, New Testament, all the scriptures. But the time will come when they will not endorse sound doctrine. And that's where we're at right now. Um, it's the most beautiful, amazing blessing when you realize how high Jesus is. I want to exalt Jesus and lift him up. Trinitarians are constantly tearing him down. Oh, he's, he's the second member of the Trinity. Well, if uh, the old dirt bike saying I grew up with, second place is the first loser. <laughs> um, if Jesus Christ is second place and he's not the top dog, there's somebody higher than him. He's just a little boy down there. Um, don't fall for this Trinitarian paganism. And if you're going to a uh, church building where the hireling there is just radically Trinitarian and he won't listen to any kind of arguments against it or whatever else, I'd leave. Leave in a hurry. And especially don't give the guy any of your money because he's a lying con artist adding to the scriptures. Thank you for watching.